My name is Keith Jacobson. I'm the lead pastor here. And it is a joy to not only welcome you, but of course to welcome our musical guests tonight. Last few years, we've missed a few things. And uh, tonight we get to celebrate uh, the Lord's good blessings on us, that he is restoring so much in our lives. It is a joy to have the Heritage Singers with us tonight. I think each of us, as we gather around, we have a wide range of stories, different songs, different, different venues where we have been blessed by their ministry. So once again, welcome. It is good to be together. Just before they step out, let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace toward us, the gift of your son Jesus, and sweet spirit that you, you move into our hearts, into our minds, and that you help us remember. So now, we pray for the divine three to be present tonight, that you will anoint our minds, our very emotions, so that what we hear, what we see, will be enhanced by your holy presence. Right now, we, we surrender this time, our lives, and we thank you for the ministries of these ministers of the gospel and music, and we surrender them and this time to the honor, to the glory, to the worship of your name. In the blessed name of Jesus, we all say amen, amen. So let's give a welcome to the Heritage Singers tonight. Come on in. Holy, holy. 
Well, good evening, everybody. That is our prayer. That is the cry 
of our hearts tonight, those first two songs we sang, knowing that his presence is here with us tonight. Do you believe that? Do you know that to be true? Uh, he is in this place, and he is just like that second song we sang. He is always speaking. He is always moving. Whenever two or more are gathered, he is with us. And I believe tonight that he wants to do amazing, miraculous things in our hearts and lives. Some of us need a reset. Some of us need... Uh, uh, to get some clarity where there's confusion. Some of us need to have a, a light bulb maybe come on where there has been some darkness and some shade. And tonight God wants to do that. Tonight God wants to heal hearts. He wants to restore relationships. He wants to make us whole. He wants to make us more like his son Jesus. And we are so honored to be here uh, again tonight at Carmichael Church. Uh, where so much of the history of this group started. I was talking to Frank John earlier. He was telling me that in this very building, uh, back in 1969, it, 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 he was sitting on this side, and uh, the pastor at the time brought up this young group of singers from Portland who uh, were led by this young kid, Max Mace, called the Rose City Singers. And uh, it was two hours of just hope, and love, and gospel, and good news, and uh, so good, and yeah, Rudy and Ju uh, yeah, Jenny were there too, incredible, so we're so honored to be here, and we have two objectives tonight, I just want you to know, two things that we want to accomplish first and foremost, uh, it, that, that ho the Holy Spirit that is here, the presence of, uh, of our Father, uh, we want to, to lift Him up, we want to make much of God tonight, I believe like that old him that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full on his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. Yeah. Oh, you guys are ready to sing tonight. We're going to do some more of that for sure. But I want to do that because when we make much of God, the things in our lives, the things of earth, the things that we all deal and struggle and carry in just get clearer, don't they? They get put in perspective. So that is priority number one. Priority number two is to just honor the life of a man that we so, so, so dearly loved and so dearly miss tonight. We miss Max. Uh, the impact that he had on our lives, on so many other singers that got to watch his life close up, and on so many of you that watched his life for so many years um, is really impossible to describe. Uh, we just want to honor him well tonight. And you know what he would love the most is to hear your voices, to hear our voices, uh, to see us as a family tonight worship uh, the God of the universe, the creator of all things. There was a song uh, that we've sung for years now that Max used to love. And uh, the reason Max used to love it so much is because Max used to love to sing about heaven. He loved to sing about hope. He knew that you and I, our hearts, uh, would always be so encouraged. And sometimes we just needed to think about what heaven will be like. But what also Max knew about this next song uh, was that this was not just a song for one day when we all get to heaven. This was a song about now. This is a song about how we, we are intended to live our lives, how to worship uh, as men and women, as sons and daughters of the Most High God, who's worthy of our praise. And so as I sing this next song, I don't want you just to think in your minds, man, won't it be great one day when we're in heaven? Which is true, which is true. But do you think for maybe just a second, maybe for just a couple hours tonight, God might be saying, no, I want you to worship me like that right now. And as you leave these doors, as you leave this room, as you go into your homes, your workplaces, your schools, couldn't it be that we could worship God like this every day of our lives? I can only imagine what that will be like, right? Come on. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine when my eyes will see is your face is before me I can only imagine it. 
I can only imagine When surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you, be still Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? I'll be able to speak at all I can only imagine Oh, I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself I'm standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I will do is forever and ever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, yeah. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. Oh, when I'm surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you, be still, will I stand in your presence? But to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine? Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, when I'm surrounded by you, To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine. Yes, I am. I'm going across the 
to sorrow and there's no hope for tomorrow that's when jesus he is all that i need If you know the song, sing with us, won't you? I'm rich, I'm free, I want to tell the world that I'm happy, I got Jesus right here, right here in my heart. Sister, round 
here It's because we're a family And these folks are so dear When one has a heartache We all shed a tear And rejoice in this victory In this family so dear I'm so glad from a book. I kind of needed these words earlier. <laughs> I should have had my folder out. <laughs> I've only sung that song for 800 years. Anyway, I want to read an excerpt from a book that I feel um, really sets up this next song. It was a Wednesday night church service when the lyrics to a familiar song that I had sung many times before suddenly held fresh revelation and meaning. I stood there, arms raised, singing words that resonated so deeply with my heart and with my mind and with my circumstances. Here's some of the words that I sang. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than my unbelief. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. The Spirit's message to my soul was this. Don't ever let the storm soften your voice or stop your song. Let your praises roar. Our God is the Lion of Judah. And the lion doesn't back down when the enemy advances. The lion lets out a roar and looks straight at the enemy with an authority and a power that declares you don't stand a chance. The kingdom of God is superior. It's light. And darkness is always the inferior power. And the authority and the power that I carry because of Jesus comes from the kingdom of light. Storms will come, hardships will come, the attacks will come, but how I respond makes all the difference. Will I respond with declarations and words of fear or of victory? Will I respond with declaration and words of defeat or words of power? Proverbs 18.21 says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. We so often speak death over our life and speak life over our enemy when we really need to be speaking life in the storm and death to the enemy. You see, Satan roams around like a lion seeking whom he may destroy. He's looking for an open door, an opportunity to kill, to steal, and destroy. And he disguises himself as a lion because all he can do is pretend and play dress up. There's only one lion of Judah and his name is Jesus Christ. The lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The king sitting on the throne at the right hand of the father. The beginning and the end. The final say. The author of life. The just judge. The king of kings and the lord of lords. That fake lion is king of the inferior kingdom of darkness. And the scriptures say that he must bow to the name that is above every name, Jesus. So if I'm walking in the power and the authority of the greater kingdom, the one 
of which I am a citizen, then why am I allowing that fake lion to intimidate me, to lie to me, to steal from me? It is one thing to raise our hallelujahs in the celebration, but it's quite another to raise our hallelujahs in the storm. Which hallelujah do you think confounds and frustrates the enemy more? Which hallelujah takes my timidity and turns it into a mighty roar? It's the hallelujah raised in faith. It's the hallelujah that believes the one who says he is faithful is faithful. That hallelujah has the power to take what I feel and make it bow the knee to what I know. That hallelujah takes my burden and carries it so I don't have to. When I surrender my worry and my doubt in my declarations of praise, I am strengthening myself in the Lord just like David did. And I'm also reminding that fake lion who he is and who I am. When I choose to offer up my sacrifice of praise and declare with my mouth the goodness of God, that's when my trust increases. My faith becomes stronger. My courage becomes bigger and my peace becomes weightier and my joy is made fuller. Psalm 34, 1. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continue continually be on my mouth. Satan's manifested schemes And you feel the urge within you To submit to earthly fears Don't let the faith you're standing in Seem to disappear Praise the Lord He can work through those who praise Him Praise the Lord For a God inhabits praise Praise the Lord For the chains that seem to bind you Serve only to remind you That they drop powerless behind you When you praise Him Now Satan is a liar And he wants to make us think that we are paupers when he knows himself we're children of the king so lift up the mighty shield of faith for the battle must be won we know that jesus christ has risen so the work's already done praise the lord chains that seem to bind you serve only to remind you that they drop powerless behind you when you praise Him. Way. 
is coming from you. Your peace you give to me in times of my storm.
Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Cause your love is so much stronger than whatever tries. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Forgive me, Jesus, as I thought I could control whatever life would throw my way oh but this i will admit it's brought me to my knees and i need you lord and i'm not ashamed to say but sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a troubled sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold. What mountain are you facing tonight? If you would have told me that um, almost two years ago that I was going to lose my dad, my best friend, I just wouldn't have believed it. Um, he had so much to live for and so many dreams ahead. And um, what happened to him was actually very sudden. We weren't expecting it at all. He'd gone through 30 radiation treatments. He'd gone through the surgery. He had a tumor in his salivary gland. And so in our minds, that was it. You know, we're good. He rang the bell. And um, then he just 
like a month or two later, just started getting really weak, and it just, anyway, with, within a week, he passed away. And we just, we're still shocked up here. Anyway, I miss him like crazy. <laughs> I mean, every day I miss him. And the sweetest gift that my dad gave me was um, being able to forgive. My dad was so good at forgiving people that didn't really even deserve to be forgiven. Um, he had just the warmest, sweetest heart. And if you're going through something tonight that maybe nobody even knows about, maybe it's a diagnosis, maybe it's a relationship, financial issues, whatever it is, I want to assure you that God will be there for you through it. That's the only way I'm here tonight is because God has filled that empty void in my heart. And he's the only one that can do that. Things that you try to keep busy with, they're never going to feel right. what Jesus can feel. Um, my dad taught us all to love everyone, whether it's the janitor or the pastor or anyone in between. Everybody was on the same level. He always was an encourager to, to the people behind the scenes that never got credit, and I love that about him. Um, my brother and I are hanging in there. My mom just turned 83 a couple days ago, and she wanted to be here tonight, but she just felt it would be too rough to just keep talking about my dad. Um, but anyway, she sends her love, and she's doing well. And we are so excited that we are one day closer to going to heaven and seeing him again. Um, we have so much to look forward to. This, this earth has nothing to offer us. It's getting crazier by the day. But I want to encourage you to not get ready, but to live ready. Live your life today ready. Whatever happens, it's in God's hands. But trust him through the storms. He's going to be there for you. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye, all is peace forever. Jesus, 
just sing some of that in this room tonight. I want to hear your voices sing, what a day that will be when my Jesus. Come on, choir, let me hear the parts now. When I, yeah. The one who saved me by when he took, when he takes. And he leads me, and he leads me to the, the promised land. What a day. What a day. Yes. Glorious day that will be. Amen. Amen.
that city Well, my love, the one told knew me well Then they took me down the streets of heaven and all the scenes they were too many they were too many to then I saw I talked with Mark I even sat down with Timothy Then I said, Timothy that can you imagine what it's going to be like to be able to talk to Timothy and sit with Abraham oh I can't wait for that glorious glorious day will we be together in fellowship there's no more sin amen no more pain no more financial struggles no more diagnosis bad diagnosis Heaven's going to be a great, 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 great day. Well, it's that time of our concert. We have a few more songs that we want to share with you guys, but we want to invite the ushers, if they, if they can please come forward. We are going to be um, taking an offering. And we want to tell you that Heritage Singers, we are so, so honored to have been able to just following the footsteps of our, our fearless leader, Max Mays. And I know that if he would be here tonight, he would be just so happy to see all of you here. And the Heritage Singers, um, Val and Greg, they have taken a step of faith to step out and continue his legacy. Can everybody say amen to that? 
And we can't, we can't do it alone. And we want to invite you to journey with us. And we want to invite you to come with the Heritage Singers. Come along with the Heritage Singers. And uh, we can't do it without you. And as you know, you walked in through these doors without having to pay a ticket. We are asking if you can help us by giving um, some love in the love offering. You know, things like the new album that we're going to be talking about that's, um, that's coming out here in the next couple of weeks. We just are taking by, we're just stepping out in faith to just say, God, we're going to continue this music ministry to reach people all over the world with song. But what's most important, the message that's in the song. And church, we cannot do it without you. And so tonight, we just ask that you will just um, dig deep into your pocket and just put a little extra love in that offering. Uh, I think it's a sack, as I'm seeing, not a plate. Um, we would really appreciate it. We are so on fire to go out and continue to sing for Jesus. Amen? Will you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father God, I want to pray, Lord Jesus, right now, Lord, that you will be with those that are going to give tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, as they put that offering in that, in that plate, Lord Jesus, Lord, may they recognize, Lord, that it is not for us or about us. It's about you, Jesus. It's about your mission in our lives, Lord Jesus. It's the dream and the ministry that, and the legacy that Max Mace left, Lord Jesus. And his dream is our dream as well, Lord, to continue spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ through music. So, Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bless this offering that's going to be collected. May it bring you honor and glory is my prayer in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. Thank you so much. Now, I just want to make sure that you understand we have some more songs we're going to be singing, so it's not, it's not over. And right now, I want to invite Val to come next to me as the offering is being collected. I want to talk about um, what we have at the table, Val. We have, your dad always used to say the record table, but we know it's not, no, no records, no records. We have CDs and we have some merchandise that we want to um, share with you, and then I know we have an album that we want to talk about. But let's talk about this first, and then we'll tell, tell them about the album. Since we were here, we've had two albums released. Uh, the song that Miguel sang, Praise the Lord, which is one of my favorites, and the one that Tim Calhoun sang, Working on a Building, is on this new one. It's called Faithful, and it's a, it's a really great album. So we have that back there. We also, um, during uh, COVID, um, during that COVID season, the group um, didn't shelter in place. We came together and we recorded an album. And uh, we sheltered together. A Christmas album. We wanted to just sing joyful songs and come together. And so this is an excellent Christmas album. And guess what? Christmas is just around the corner, folks. So it's a great gift to get. Um, Wonderful songs like Silent Night, I'll Be Home for Christmas, um, All Is Well. Just wonderful songs that you don't want to um, miss out on. They have beautiful harmony, beautiful harmony, just beautiful. So about five years ago, almost six, uh, we had a reunion and had singers from all over come for this very special night, and it was a night that we did a tribute to my parents. In fact, Rudy and Ginny, I see you, Rudy. Rudy and Ginny were at this event, and um, it's about three hours of music. So we have DVD and Blu-ray also, and we also have the CDs of this, but this is really, get your popcorn out, because this is really long, but it's, it's so much fun, so you need to check this out. That's called the Heritage 45th Reunion. 
One of the things that we remember fondly of our, our dear Max Mace is he, oh, he loved ball caps. He had lots of ball caps. And uh, so tonight we had these ball caps celebrating and commemorating our 50th year anniversary. So we have some of those that you can get in the back. So take one of these with you, even if it is just to hang it there so you can uh, remember the 50th year. But Val, most importantly, you have a book here that uh, tells the story of the Heritage Singers. So you have one up here, and I think you're wanting to, wanting to share it. Yeah, but I wanted to share this, this book, uh, my mom just poured her heart into. It's stories over the years of how the bus broke down over and over. You guys know about that, Rudy and Jenny. And um, just stories how God protected us over the last 50 years in, in travel, but and just stories of changed lives and how um, when we were just out there on faith, um, God always provided. So it's really an uplifting book. And tonight, um, it's on a really special. It's the cost of the book. It's $10 tonight. So you need, to, yeah, that's really good. So you need to go back there. But more than anything, I just want you to see how God has provided over the last 50 years with this faith ministry. We praise him for that. Um, okay, so who, who has been following Heritage since 1971? Okay, okay. Rose City Singers, yep, yep, that's right. Oh, how do I do this? The oldest? Okay, so anyone that is 80 years old that followed the Heritage this whole time? 80, eight zero. Oh wow, okay, okay, how about 85? Oh, wow, okay, how about 90? Well, there's two, okay. my word. Tonight is, is your special night. There's, there's oh, there's two, two? There's two oh. 90. Oh, three, okay, let's three. find out. So when, let's see, 91? 92. 92? 90, yep, 92's right here. 91. Okay, 92. Where? There was a 92, right? Is there, is there anybody 92? So the 91. Three 91s. Okay. 91 and a half. <laughs> okay. Okay. Y yeah. Um, yeah. Who is gonna? Who, who can still read? Have her come. <laughs> yeah. Have her come <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. We're gonna give you a book, and if you come back to the CD table, we'll give you one as well. Okay, guys. You've been sitting a long time. Are you ready to have a happy day? This is for Jeffrey Rose. If you're out there, this song's for you. Stand up, you can put your hands together, whatever you can do. I know you've been sitting for a little while. Just stand up, put your hands together. We're just praying to the good Lord. Oh, happy day. 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 When Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. my sins away. Oh, happy day. 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 When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. When my Jesus washed. My sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. He taught me how. He taught me how. To watch. Fight and pray. 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 
my sins away. You may be seated. Good evening. I just want to introduce myself. My name is Miguel Verazas. I've been singing with the group for now. I think I'm going on year nine of singing with the group. So it's, yes, it's been such a great time. I'm pastoring not too far away from here. That's my job in Pleasant Hill, California. And I love my job, love my youth, love working with uh, my kiddos and uh, my wife, Ashley, um, love of my life, and uh, she's at home tonight with the kiddos. I have my daughter, who's turning five years old tomorrow. And let me tell you, time flies when you're having a good time. Five years old, I can't believe it. And then my son, my son Noah, who is turning 11 months. And uh, we are just so, so, so blessed. Um, with our kids and I just love singing with this group. This is a uh, family and uh, we really enjoy singing Listen, I told you about um, a special Album that's that's been recorded and it's coming in a couple of weeks and I just want to share this with you I'm telling you how much we're family and how much we, we, we love each other and I just have to share with you that we've come together the heritage singers and recorded an album in honor of of our, of our wonderful, wonderful man, Max Mays. It's a tribute album. And we're gonna be, let's see if we have that picture, that image there to show you of uh, what is to come. A tribute to our a wonderful, wonderful man. And let me tell you, the, um, just the love and the voices that came together to put this together is just, you, you can feel it. And, we go back to that sound that Max just absolutely loved. And we are having, I believe, Val, we have pre-sales that are happening tonight. So some of the songs on that, you're going to love this. Of course, we've done The Lighthouse. And as you can see, the picture um, of, the light, of The Lighthouse is, is on that uh, cover. There's just some prizes there. We also um, are doing, help me out, something beautiful. Um, what a precious uh, friend is he? Yes, can you remember those songs? What a precious friend is Gentle he? Gentle Shepherd. Because, because he, lives. he lives. Oh, how about this one? The King is coming. We redid it. Yes. And we're going to we, sing it for the first time tonight. So don't go away, because you don't know when it's going to come up. Kind of, kind of come up. So, just, um, just a wonderful album. It's just, it's really done with love. And again, tonight, there's going to be pre-sales for that album. Make sure that you sign up so that you can get one. Isn't it, is, isn't it wonderful that we have this album for him and just, just for him? Hey, thank you so much for coming out and praising God with us. Okay, I promise I'm not going to talk as long as him. I hope. 
<laughs> right. Be careful now, Cindy. I know. My name is Cindy Hafner. I'm, I was born in Canada, A. Eh? But, um, but I make my home now in Elk Grove with my wonderful husband, Eddie Hafner. Is he here? Of course he's not here. And I have a beautiful daughter and a beautiful two-year-old grandson. So blessed. Um, I came down from Canada to the States back in 1978 to sing with Max. So I've been um, around for a while. But I'm young. Anyway, I sing alto, and it's a blessing to see all of you here tonight. And thank you so much for coming. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dave Bell, and I grew up in the great Pacific Northwest, in the city of Walla Walla, Washington. All right, got some Northwesterners here. Great. But I make my home up at uh, Pacific Union College now, where I teach during the week. Um, but uh, on the weekends, you know, on special trips, I'm out here with the Heritage Singers. Started with this group 40 years ago, and uh, just a little scrawny 19-year-old kid. I'm not so scrawny anymore. But uh, it's such a, yeah, I started when I first came in, I was singing soprano and worked my way down over the years. Yeah. Um, I do have a wonderful wife who is not here tonight, but her name is Susan, but uh, she's the love of my life. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Hi, everyone. My name is Melody Davis, and I will be coming up on my 30th year, like in February. So it's been a while. Um, I live in Southern California. We recently made a pretty big move from beautiful suburbia, Orange County, to smack dab in the middle of Los Angeles. And um, we're, we're starting a new chapter of life. God has some fresh assignments for us as a family, and um, we really love it. Because when you're doing what the Lord's asked you to do, he gives you the grace to love it, even though it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> um, our son recently moved out. He's in the San Diego area. And our daughter, Summer, who is with us still, she's 18. She lives in the back. She's got her own little apartment. And we're just happy as clams. But anyway, um, that's what we've been up to. And um, it's great to see you. Thank you for coming out. It's wonderful to be able to sing to a full house. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tim Calhoun, and I now make my home down in Loma Linda, California with my lovely wife and three sons. Um, I've been singing with the group since 1999, and um, I sing tenor, and um, I'm going to keep it nice and short and say thank you all for coming here, and uh, we love you. Did Greg turn your mic off again, Frank? It's <laughs> Good evening. Can you hear me now? I would like to say God bless America, the land of the free because of the brave, where we can still worship and pray in God's peace. And it's, thank you. It's, mine. it's a real blessing for the Heritage Singers to be invited back to the beautiful old Carmichael Church tonight. And um, I want to thank our senior pastor, Keith Jacobson, Pastor Trinidad and Ben Ferguson for allowing us to come in, uh, finding a weekend where we have the ability to come in and sing and worship with you and fo folks in song. My name is Frank John Salis, as you can tell by looking. I've been with the group many, many, many years, and I sing on a part-time basis, and it's just a real thrill to be here. Um, I would like to say that I met Max Mace right on this very stage, 1969 in March. And Rudy Yost and I were here with Jenny, and it took us about 30 minutes to come up and say hello to Max. We shook his hand. He was singing with the um, Rose City Singers at the time. And little did I realize, three years later, my wife and I would go on the road with his Eastern group, and Rudy and Jenny would join the main group for three years. But one thing he told us um, when we joined, that he has a purpose and a goal, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Max's purpose, was to magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ every night in song. And his goal was that when you leave here tonight, we want you to leave with a, a big part of God's harmony in your heart. Um, 
Again, I'm Frank John Salis. When I'm not here, I'm, I work for Salis Brothers Funeral Home in Modesto, California. My son is here, and my whole family, I won't name them all, but they're all over here on the right. Thank you, Alexander, my grand. My wife is here. Carolyn, stand just a moment. She doesn't like to stand. She won't stand. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if, do you mind if I tell one more little story? Okay. Um, li you'll like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, September 9, 2001, Max and I flew to Papietta, Tahiti. And we flew out there. They had been calling Max to come out to the South Pacific Divisional out there and wonder if they could bring us out and sing a few songs in that part of the world. Anyhow, on the morning of 9-10, Max and I were in a bookstore in down Papietta, Tahiti. It was raining very hard. And the minute we went in the store, he said, Frank John, I'm going to go over and get an international paper. He said, I want to look at the box scores for the San Francisco Giants, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and the St. Louis Cardinals. This man's a Cardinal fan. <laughs> so, but anyhow, so he went over and bought a newspaper, ladies and gentlemen. I'm standing there watching for a van that's supposed to pick us up at 9.30. In walked a very, very well-dressed Polynesian French gentleman. And he kept looking at me, he put his umbrella down, and I smiled, I said, good morning, sir. And in hushed tones, he said, Mox Mace? I said, that's Mox. I said, would you like to meet Mox? He said, yes, I would. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, went over, I said, Mox. And he smiled, put the newspaper on his arm, and I said, this gentleman would like to meet you, Mox. So Mox said, hello. He told him while we were there, and this is what he said. He said, Mox Mace? You bring happiness and harmony into our home every week. You know, uh, he does that to all of the singers, and we hope he does it to you. Thank you for joining us tonight. That's a good, that's good right there. Thank you, Frank. My name is Scott Reed. I have been with the group now. Uh, this is my 29th year. With the group, I was also a punk 19-year-old uh, like Dave was, uh, and I am just so honored uh, to be here. I went to, I went to school, graduated just down the road at PUC. I've already met some PUC alum tonight. I hope I see some more maybe a, a little bit later afterwards, but I'm so grateful to be here. We just moved recently back to California after 16 years in the Midwest, uh, between St. Louis and Chicago, and now we are living a mile down the road, smack dab in the middle of Los Angeles uh, from the Davis family. And uh, so look out, if the Reeds and Davises are doing stuff together, it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. Uh, so get ready. Uh, but we're, uh, my, I live, live, of course, with my wife of 23 years, Holly, and uh, I've got two boys. I've got a 20-year-old uh, son and a 16-year-old son, handsome boys. Single, single boy, handsome, handsome boys. I mean, I got pictures. If you find me at the record table, I've got, like, I'll give phone numbers. We'll, we'll like, figure this out. Anyway, um, I'm so grateful to be here. And as, uh, speaking of being a father, my, one of the greatest joys of my whole life, I just want to say tonight, and I think I can speak for all of us. We'll just do this as a group tonight. I want to say, as a dad, how uh, proud I am of Valerie and Greg. Um, yeah. There is no greater honor or greater joy uh, that Max could ever have than to do ministry alongside of his daughter and his son and to know that they want this dream to continue and to perpetuate and to grow is so beautiful and inspiring and I'm super proud of you. Not as nearly as proud of you as your dad is, uh, but um, we love you guys and thank you all so much. Hello, my name is Val Mace Mappa, and I've had the privilege of being part of this ministry for the past 51 years. Woo! I know this sign is a year off, but anyway, 51 years. Um, so excited to be back home. Like, we haven't seen you in several years in this area, and it feels so good. We get to sing, and then we get to go sleep in our own beds, and that's very rare. <laughs> anyway, so glad you're here tonight. Um, God has blessed me with an amazing family. I have a son that works full-time in our ministry. He um, does the bookkeeping and wears a lot of hats. 
and um, his name is Austin. Remember, I shared his testimony when he was a baby, and God healed him, and he still remains healed, and God is good, and um, he's got, okay, I know, sorry, we're going a little longer tonight, because, because, okay, but when Austin went away to college, um, he didn't have a girlfriend, he went to Walla Walla, and I've always wanted to have a girl, and I named my girl Chloe Nicole. And so in January, his freshman year, he called me and said, Mom, I met this sweet girl. What's her name? Chloe Nicole. I kid you not. So I want you to meet <laughs> Chloe, my daughter-in-law. They've been married five years. She teaches um, kindergarten and first grade at El Dorado Adventist School. Stand up. I'm proud of you guys. So if you think for a second that God doesn't listen to those little things in your life, you're wrong. He does. He cares about the little things. Anyway, my husband's home tonight with my mom. Um, we've been married 31 years. He still uh, works full time in the recording studio. And I've got to say this new album of my dad's is just the orchestra. On, uh, the orchestra on is absolutely beautiful, which he did. And you guys did a good job, too. You're singing. <laughs> Anyway, um, the guy in the back there is my brother. He and I have been here since we were 10 and 11 years old. Wow, we're old. Um, his name is Greg Mace. He has a sound and lighting company. Greg, wave back there. And I don't know who of his family is here tonight, but I do know my mini-me is here. This is his daughter, Bella. Stand up. She's a good little singer. <laughs> Yes, I got a great family. And Greg is married to Adriani. I, is she here? No. It, oh, you are here. Adriani, she's here. Okay, that's my sister-in-law. She's got an amazing place in Placerville called Botelli that has been such a blessing to us. Um, workout, massage, all that fun stuff. But God gave her that dream that she's always had for years. Also, our, um, I don't even know what to call you, my buddy, <laughs> uh, Julie is here, and she runs, besides Art, Austin, and I, Julie's the other one in the office, and she wears a lot of hats, and she does such a great job, and we just love having you a part of our ministry. Julie, stand up. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much uh, for coming out, and uh, how about a quartet song? Okay. If you want more happy than your heart will hold, if you want to stand taller in the truth we're told, take whatever you have and give it away. If you want less slowly and a lot more fun and deep satisfaction when the day is done, throw your heart wide open and give it away. He was working in the garden, I happened by. He weighed me over with a look in his eye and started breaking all some ears of corn. Today this corn is just right So pull it up for yourself But tonight I learned it's true What my daddy used to say He said nothing is quite as good Until you give it away If you want more happy Then your heart will hold If you want to stand taller In the truth we're told Gone over that dam, 
since that day in the garden with my Uncle Sam. So I hope you hear these words I have to say. There are two kind of folks, takers and givers, gripers, complainers, big hearted livers. Depends on how we choose to spend our day.
a place of everlasting joy and peace where the streams of life are flowing there forever Great to see him, hear him. So good. Sounds like home to me. It sounds like home to me. And we all know that he is preparing a place for us. And we look forward to that with everything in us, especially when we see just the confusion and the conflict and the, uh, the division when it comes to life and society and politics and every other thing. But I don't know if you know this or not. I think a lot of you probably do, but I want to remind you tonight, Jesus did not come to address 
necessarily social injustice and political division. Thing. He actually came to teach us a different way, another kingdom, another kingdom. He knew the kingdom of this earth, the kingdoms of this earth would soon fade away. They all do. So he came to teach us another way. And he is a king of that kingdom. And he taught us to pray. When you pray, pray like this. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I, I want to challenge some of us tonight. We're about to be done here, but I want us to leave with a challenge. I know sometimes I'm like you. I'm just so weary from the fight that I just want to hang on until he comes again and I can be in the kingdom in heaven with him. But what did he say? <laughs> what did he tell us when, when he taught us to pray? He says, no, I want you to pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on this earth just as it is in heaven. And so tonight, two parts. One is hope, one is challenge. The hope is we have a king and he is at the right hand of the most high God. He is high and exalted. Nothing is outside of his control. He's not worried. He's not wringing his hands, wondering what he's going to do with America. He is on the throne and he is sovereign and he is all powerful and he is good and he has given all authority through the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember he told his followers, it's actually good that I leave. You know why it's good? Because I'm going to send someone uh, that, that's even, that will infill all of you. Now that we get to be the hands, the feet, the kingdom of heaven on this earth, just as it is in heaven. And so that's the challenge tonight. Can we live the way, the beautiful uh, the, uh, letter or whatever that was, chapter from the book that Melody read was so beautiful, that talking about what is it like to live today fully live today in the kingdom of God and the authority that he has given us as sons and daughters to be the light to the world. You know, this world is desperate for hope and for truth. They don't know what they're doing. Jesus said it on the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. They don't know what they're doing. So many of us don't know what we're doing. There's a lot of lost people, and they need light. They don't need people just hiding away in their rooms until Jesus comes back, right? We need to be God's kingdom on the earth as it is in heaven. And I love the imagery of a kingdom with castles and with army and with people at posts and men and women on walls guarding the kingdom. And I'll tell you what. Max used to love this old song that talked all about the kingdom of heaven and the king who sits on the throne. And so this is the first time tonight that we get to sing this song. And I pray that you would leave tonight feeling full of hope and also full of great responsibility. That as you pray that prayer the way Jesus taught us to pray, that you would know, Jesus, would you use me today? What would you have me do today to be your kingdom on this earth, to be your light to my neighbors and my school and my workplace? Lord, I want your kingdom to come right here on this earth as it is in heaven. There's a pretty good-sized army in this place. I think we can do some damage for his kingdom. Do you believe that? Because he is on the throne, and he is coming back again soon. Listen to this. Come on. Place is empty, no more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent. No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labors in the courtroom. No debate, work on earth has been suspended as the king comes through the gates the king is coming the king is coming i just heard the trumpet sounding and now his face i see the king is coming, the King is coming, 
praise God, He's coming for me. Happy faces line the hallways, those whose lives have been redeemed, broken homes He has mended. Those in prison, he's set free. Busy how little children and their labor. Hand in hand, stand all alone. Those who are crippled, broken, ruined. Now clad in garments, white as snow. I can hear the chariots rumble. I can see the marching's wrong, the flurry of God's trumpet spells the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are now unfolding, heaven's grand sends all in place, heaven's choir is now